Hello everyone, the TCG Leafeon here, and I'm here with a very different video than normal. Normally we do pack openings, but when you can't get packs or you're need and you're trying to still get videos out, we're gonna try something new. Um today I'm gonna teach you about the Digimon card game. I've been opening it on the channel and I'm a huge fan. I love playing it. And I really enjoy Digimon, if you can't tell. I even have the the whole Digimon bracelet. But we're going to go over some of the different types of cards and what some of the cards can do and certain abilities. And then maybe I'll put out a how-to video and maybe some deck techs and how to play or some battles. Because I have a friend who really enjoys playing as well and he was like, why don't you put that on the channel? And I thought that was a good idea. So today we're going to go over the different card types, how exactly the card types interact, and the different colors. We'll go ahead and we'll start with a mixture of colors and card types. Our first card type we're going to go over is a Digitama, or a level 2 Digimon, which you're like, oh, why is it starting at level 2? Because this is the level 2, and that's the level 1 in the picture. So I have Karonamon here. Who is indeed a Digitama, which is indicated by this on the back of the card, which it sets separately from your main deck, in which it cannot actually battle, but most of them, if not all of them, have a special inherit skill, which means when it digivolves, it gains this ability. Excuse me. So we have Karanamon as our Digitama. Next, we'll move on to a level 3 card which I have Impmon here, which has a doesn't have an inherent skill. But our level threes are commonly known as rookies in English. They are the first ones that can enter into the battle arena. You can play them for their cost, or you can digivolve them. So I don't have a good example nearby, because the only way you can digivolve is if it shares the color here. So let's say Karanamon was purple, you could digivolve into Entmon. But we're not going to worry about that till the how to play video. But we have our level threes. Next, which I chose purple to show the different colors. Next, we have our level fours, which is our champion level in English. And I chose Pelagermon, who's a green card. He also has a special ability, allows him to digivolve from tamers. But again, that comes later. Um, but there's our level four, which again works the same way. You can either play it for that or evolve it for that, as long as the colors match. Next, we have Mega Dramon, which is a first look at some of the upcoming cards that aren't out in English yet, where the card will actually be two colors. So before they change it to where the card actually has two colors, which it'll be split down the middle and one side's one color and one side's the other. We have the, this text that says this Digimon is also treated as black, even though it's a red card. And you can see it can digivolve from black or red. And that's a level 5, which is our ultimate level in English. And then I went ahead and I chose a black card for our Mega, or our level 6. And I chose Palo Volcano so I can simply show the whole, oh, that's a black card. But this one's red, but on my turn, it's a black card, so I can technically digivolve Pile Volcanomon in, from Mega Dramon. It's easier to show in a game or on, or at a like later date whenever I decide to do a how to play, but there are normally only two through six, but there are some special cards that are level seven cards, which are the, um, Rough, I don't remember, Ultra Mega, Burst Mode, Fusions, Jogress, they have different names in English, uh, and just depending on which one it is, depends on what it is, like, like Chaos Mon would technically be a Fusion slash Jogress, but she doesn't have the special effects because they're not in the English card game yet, but he is a level 7 that can evolve, who's also a white card, which you'll see most, lots of level 7s are white, I'll show, I have another one I'm going to show here later in this video, but, um, white cards means that they can kind of go into any deck, so, like, I could stick Chaos Mon into any deck, I would probably only put him into a black or green deck, because of the black and green, 
but that is our major colors and the only color i did not show was yellow which i think i have one sitting here oh here we go we'll just use make one or make crack one um this is our yellow cards they are normally more reliant on security which is your source of life and recovering it and using it to attack blue likes de-digivolving and drawing cards purple likes to discard cards and play cards from the grave or from the trash green likes hitting very hard and doing a thing called piercing which you can see peladron has it which when you attack an opponent's digimon it still hits your opponent red likes attacking very fast and stacking up a bunch of abilities to hit even harder black tend to have the ability reboot or blocker which every type has blocker but black has a lot of it and reboot basically means oh i attacked on my turn on my opponent's turn it can defend or it can attack again and then white normally tends to have the um abilities of whatever color the white card is belonging with which again i'll show you more examples of white cards here later so now that we're over the digimon c colors and the um evolution numbers let's move on to the next section which i have three other cards i have two options cards and a tamer here well i chose a white tamer because like i said before white cards can go into just about any deck and takumi aiba is a very good example of that on your turn one of your opponent when your opponent's digimon digivolves suspend the tamer to draw a card so when your opponent digivolves you can draw a card and it kind of slows down a lot of very fast throw a bunch of little ones out and attack decks but this is a tamer which they come in all seven colors uh interesting about tamers is if they're ever hit when they're in your security stack or your health um they're instantly played for free so like they just enter the battlefield or you can play them for their cost so and tamers always stay on the field unless destroyed or otherwise noted because like i mentioned earlier peladron can evolve from green tamers so if that peladron were to die that tamer would be gone as well next i chose purple memory boost or which is a series of cards that stay on the battlefield it is still an options card as you can see up here it says options which when you play it it stays on the battlefield like a tamer until you choose to get rid of it using its other effect which you can use the delay effect to destroy it and gain two memory and here is another options card which again i chose white for the sake of white goes into all decks for an options card to be played you must control a card of that color if i remember correctly so to play the purple options card you have to have a purple card i'll refine that answer and the exacts on that when we are when i do the how to play video but we have the security card all delete or the options card all delete which this one's slightly different than um others most security cards when they say security check effect down here um a few of them say activate this card's effect um some say they have an alternate effect which not very many do but this one is one that is added to your hand but options cards can be played at any time on your turn for their cost which some of them get really expensive but that's okay especially when it's a card like this where you return a card and destroy everything so there's those card types next i'm going to go over some of the effects some cards have so we have the on play effect with drag which i chose dragomon for this which you can reveal the top three cards of your deck and add one card with Dramon in your deck. Dra yeah, Dramon in its name along with them to your hand. Put the remaining cards on the bottom in any order. Well, on play effects means I paid three to play him. Which is interesting because there's not, there's a lot more, you'll see that on a lot of rookie cards or level threes. There's a few cards higher up that have it next we'll move on to the evolved form because i went ahead and just chose his line because it's a very good one for examples we have uh cordramon 
which has a security effect, which states security at the end of battle. Play this card without paying its memory cost. Which means if it's hit while it's in security, it plays itself onto the battlefield. And it has an on play trigger, which lets you draw two cards. So I play him. Let's say he gets hit, the security effect triggers, I play him, I draw two cards. Next, we have Wing Dramon, which I mentioned earlier has Blocker, which Blocker allows you to defend on your turn. So let's say my opponent is attacking me with the Crow Dramon. I can then rest this Digimon to block that attack and destroying card, um, card Dramon. That's what blocker is. Blockers are something I recommend running in most decks because you never know when you might need one. I have an entire deck literally that is nothing but blockers, which is really cool. And then last here we have um, Slayer Dramon, which has the Win Digivolving effect. So Win Digivolving is like an on play effect. So the on play effect, as long as I play it down instead of Digivolving, I get it. When you Digivolve, I let's say I digivolve Wing Dramon into Slayer Dramon, it gains an extra security attack. Which that means when I attack my opponent, instead of doing one health, I'll do two. To the security. And it has the um, your turn effect, which means only on your turn, this Digimon is unblockable. So that adds to a different gameplay, but there's some of the on the, the major effects. Um, I will have to go over it with the how to play video, but I'll show you some of the other effects. I'll play an interest. I'll use an interesting deck for that. Okay. And next I'm going to show you kind of how digivolving works. So you start with your Digitama, which hatches into a raising zone, which means nothing happens. This Digimon sits here in this special zone until it can digivolve. And then after the turn it's been digivolved, it can then enter the battle. Which here I have a Gob I chose Gobumon because this is from my Gobumon deck. Or my Omegamon or Omnimon deck, whatever you wish to call it. But I chose the on play Gobumon because sometimes Yeah, you need that because when you digivolve, you need an extra you draw a card. So sometimes you need that extra card draw, but let's say I've already digivolved him, I can play him for three and get that extra card draw since I've already digivolved him or, oh, I'm going to draw a card anyways. I'll digivolve him for free and draw my card. Which then Gabumon now has the ability of the Sunomon, which is why the Sigimon has Gururumon or Omnimon in its name. It gains a thousand power. Which at the, currently it doesn't have either of those in its name. But next, we I have Gururumon, which is a two cost to evolve or a four cost to play, which makes him a very solid card because he's a four cost. Most champions can range anywhere from four to six. I think I have, yeah, like we have Cordramon here who's a six drop, which for four, oh, I have nothing else to play this turn. I can play him for four and have a Digimon on the field for next turn. And there's also some that have three. And he also has a cheaper evolution, but I think the average is two for champions. There's some that have one. Which he also has an inherent skill, which as long as he has Gururumon in the name, when I attack, I draw a card. Which again, when you Digivolve, they just stack on top, which we're just going to kind of go through an evolution line. And you might be asking, well, I played Digimon or I've watched the show. TCG Leafeon, why why are you why like didn't it only evolve into Garurumon like in the show? Well, no. I can technically take this Wing Dramon, who's also blue, and Digivolve it onto Garurumon. Which is a solid play. Like I have lots of decks that don't have proper evolution in them. I'll have to, again I'll probably show that one later. But that's an interesting detail you can do, so they don't have to follow the proper evolution. Just this deck does because it's a the way the deck is, it works better that way. And then we have another special effect with Where Garurumon here, who has a win attacking. Um, if this Digimon has a Garurumon Digivolution card, unsuspend this Digimon, which all cards underneath a card. So I have Where Garurumon on top. These are the Digivolution cards. 
which sounds complex, but it's easier once you see it or once I show, which he also gains the ability that if I have eight or more cards in hand, I gain an extra attack, which is really good. And then last we have Metal Garuruman, which has a, when attacking once per turn, unsuspend this Digimon, so he can attack, unsuspend, and attack again, which is very nice, especially when stacked with the other abilities. And here is a fully evolved Digimon in the game, which, yeah, it could die beforehand, it can die to attacks, security attacks, we never know what's going to happen, but... We managed to get all the way up here. Now, I got a very special card here. We have Omnimon, which has a very special ability called Blitz. Which, when you Digivolve, let's say I attacked with Garurumon this turn. I don't know what else to do, but I could win this turn if I get one more attack. I've already used Garurumon's ability. Oh no, I need to attack one more time. I can then Digivolve into Omnimon. And what Blitz allows me to do is regardless of him already being suspended, he will unsuspend and attack my opponent, even if my turn ends. So with that Blitz, it is very nice. So basically he Digivolves and attacks. And when he Digivolves, he does automatically unsuspend to get the Blitz effect, which is nice. And... There's his, uh, and then he has a special ability. Let's say he were to be destroyed in battle. I can get rid of my War Garurumon from underneath him, or my Mel Garurumon, and he stays alive. So that is a full evolution and some of the effects that go with it. Um, I would, I'm going to go over the next video on probably how to play, which will be awkward with only one person, but that's okay. And if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and in the comments, let me know what more you want to see, any questions you have, and I hope you can find interest in the Digimon card game like I did. See you all next time. Bye!